Edorans Ajagba. This is our Vice President one, Brother Amos Arudove. This is our Secretary, Sister S.A. Bibi. This is one of your own, Brother Mena, who happens to be the President of the Youth Fellowship of this church. Huh? Hey, sorry, Estate Baptist Church. This is Sister Yoma, our Music Director great church. Huh? Hallelujah. All right. First of all, our appreciation goes to God Almighty, who has made it possible for us to experience another camping year. It has not been easy. Last year to this year, by the grace of God, the camp has come, and by the grace of God, it's rounding up today. We give God all the glory. Our special appreciation goes to the pastor in charge, our Reverend Minister. Sir, we want to say a very big thank you. But what do we say to our daddy? We say, Daddy, Nigua, sir. The youth are saying, Nigua, to you, sir, for the wonderful hosting that you granted us the opportunity to use your church. Also, we want to say a very big thank you to the diaconate who have also played a major role to see that this camp becomes a success. Again, also to the MMU of this great church. What do we say to our daddies? We say what? Ming was. Also to our WMS. We love you. What do we say to our mommies? We say what? Also, we want to say a very big thank you to the diaconate chairperson of this church. No other person than the Dickness Mrs. Patience Ugolo. Mommy, we say what? Me, what? Okay. Then also want to say a very big thank you to the welfare, our kitchen people of Avenue Baptist Church. They have been around for us since on Friday. It is a sincere prayer that the Lord will bless you really good in Jesus' name. We want to also say a very big thank you to the technical committee. We are grateful. We say what? We love you. And also, we want to say another big thank you to the protocol. They have been around us since on Friday. It is a sincere prayer that even as you've been around us, the Lord will be around you in the mighty name of Jesus. Also, to our security personnel, they have really been on ground for us. The Lord will be on ground for you in the name of Jesus. And also, quickly, we want to appreciate our advisor. Our advisor, he has been a father. It is our sincere prayer. Wherever he is, the Lord will start for him. Mr. Light Omigwe. Mr. Light Omigwe, we want to say a very big thank you. He has contributed 40% to the success of this camp. You will not understand, but I know what I'm saying. We know what we are saying. God will bless you wherever you are in Jesus' name. Also to some of our past executives, the light of our sister, Sister Mabel Opare, the Lord will richly bless you for us in the name of Jesus. Also to another one of our own, who happens to be the vice president of this church, Barista Kewe Davis. We want to say thank you. We love you. And to every member of Avenue Baptist Church, this the, the, this uh, uh, I'm short of words because I'm so glad in my heart. When the cap was the fire approaching, we looked at our preparation, we looked at our back. How will this camp come to pass? We looked at the budget. How are we ever going to realize that? But the Lord has been very faithful. The Lord has been very faithful. He has used every member of this church to bless our life. He will also bless your life in return in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Youth, let us say thank you to all everybody. And we love you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, still in the spirit of appreciation, I join the youth to appreciate the church for taking care of the first meal of the camp 
apart from the offering we raised, we took care of the first meal. So on behalf of the youths, because they sent part of the food, come give me too. So I eat inside the food. So thank you very much for supporting them financially to provide the first meal for the first day of the camp. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Put a smile on your face. Hallelujah. The choir is going to do a menu of songs and I don't want you to just sit down. You know, sometimes in school when we're going to class, I used to tell my teens, my friends, I said, there's no theology in heaven. When we get to heaven, the only thing that we're going to be doing is to be celebrating and rejoicing. There is no audience. There's just one audience. And who is that audience? Who is the audience? It's God. So we are all going to participate in this worship. And I pray that as we give your heart to the Lord this morning in sincerity, as we worship in, in spirit and in truth, that he will manifest himself in our midst. Be blessed. Amen.
Jesus Christ. Hey. Come on. Jesus, you're the one. 
bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Please don't just just still be on your feet and lift up your hands. Bless the Lord. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. We give you glory. We give you praise. Come on, open your mouth and say, Father, you are great. Your presence is everything to me. Your power, your glory, your grace. I see it all around me. All around me. All around me. All around me. Thank you, Jesus. Beside your majesty, gave up everything for me. Suffer that the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and earth exalted. You lay aside your majesty. Gave up everything for me. Suffer that the hands of those you have created. You took all our sins and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and earth exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me, gave your life to set me free. So I lift my hands to you in other way. I really want to worship, I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever, forever. Set me free, so I lift my voice to you in other way. I really want to worship you, I really want to worship you. You are from my heart, and I am yours forever. More. I will love you for the rest of my life. You are the only one who died for me, gave your life to set me free. So Set me free, so I lift my voice to you. In other ways. That's what I say. Oh Lord, my God. Oh Lord, my God. I exalt.
you are doing even right now. We are not standing here alive by chance. It is your mercy. It is your love. Father, we say thank you. You have kept us. You fought our battles for us. Father, we say thank you. Who is there like unto you, God? Among the gods, there's no one like you. You are glorious in holiness. And you are fearful in praises. But always you're doing wonders. Awesome wonders. For what you did last week, we say thank you. And what you have done this day, ushering us into today, Father, we say thank you. Mighty God, we are grateful. Please, Lord, speak to us. Lord, our hearts are ready. Please speak to us and bring great glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You may be seated. For some days now, we've dwelt on the book of George, chapter number two. And the Spirit of the Lord has been doing what only He can do. By the help of the Spirit of God, we open up to George two. And he began to open up our eyes and understanding to amazing things. A quick way to run that up, we'll be going back to Joel 2. From verse number 21, we read yesterday. 
He says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree bearded her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. My great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be a shame. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And as we dwelt on this scripture yesterday, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to us. And the Lord has this for somebody. As, as we are reading through, something got my attention. I actually didn't want to read from Joel chapter 2. I wanted to go to Romans, which was the other scripture we've not used since the first day. But the Spirit of the Lord led me back to Joel, chapter 2. Now let's go down to verse number 23. He says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. Take note, he hath given you. So that's in the past. All right, he has already done that. He had given you the former rain moderately. In this part of the country, we don't know the difference what the children of Israel were experiencing here. It is like almost every month rain fall. Like almost every month here. But over there in Israel, they have to pray for the rain to come when it is time for the rain. There is the moderate rain, all right? There is the former and the latter rain. If the former falls and the latter refuses to fall, everything they have worked for will be wasted. And so it is very important after they had the first rain to cause the seed to grow. It is very important that they pray that the latter rain will come. Because the latter rain will determine the quality of harvest. I don't know where you are right now. If you have labored and labored and it is time for the fruit to show up if what is needed 
is not given, all of your labor will be wasted. And nobody will ever want to sow a seed that you are not sure you are going to reap. And as the youth gather from the first day, we're looking at the potentials of this church and other churches, the future. If the rain, the latter rain refuses to fall, the former rain is going to be a wasted effort. And except the Lord causes there to be the release of the latter rain, we are in trouble. As I stood here, I looked at the number of youth and something was stirred up on my inside. Except the latter rain comes in, all we have been doing will be wasted. And we don't want to spend our time laboring for what we will not harvest. Please, as you look at the young ones around us, please, let's not just look at them and ignore. Please, go extra. Go extra. Please, be more attentive. Be more understanding. Because if the effort that has been invested from when they were very little does not mean the latter rain. If it doesn't meet the latter rain, it will be waste of effort. Please, adults, please pay close attention to the young soul. Please don't just ignore them. Don't just look at them and get angry. Please, I feel this leading to say this this morning. Let's go beyond what we used to do. It is easy to just say that guy is stupid, that guy is rough, that lady is something. It is very easy. But please, don't forget that person may well be your son. That person may well be your daughter. Please, we need to go extra mile to see that these young people become who God has destined them to be. Please, I'm talking about extra mile. Not what is convenient for you. When they approached me to speak to them, I was like, why are they coming to me? There are other persons, you know. And, you know, they kept coming. And, beloved, please, we all have this unique opportunity. It's a unique one. To have a young soul come close to you is a great blessing. Parents have amazing children now. Huh? Now, if they don't talk with you, your children don't talk with you, how do you feel? Please, don't look at these young ones and look at them like they're on their own. These ones need our attention like never before. God is stirring in our heart a strong hunger these ones are the people we are talking about the future. Then these ones have to be in place. The next 50 years, huh, some people will be gone. That is the truth. Uh, even if you don't say amen, that is the truth. Uh, 
the next 60 years, so many of us would have been gone. All right? And, but these ones will still be doing well. So the future is in their hand. Whatever we are laboring for right now is in their hands. You see, if your children are not here and they are far away, you are praying and hoping that they are living according to the will and the purpose of God. Please, this is a strong, very passionate thing in my heart. Let's reach out to these young ones. You may look at them and they may look so rough, they may look like unkept. Please, go an extra mile. If you don't like their trousers, you can choose to buy a different one for them. That's the truth. If you don't like their shirt, you can go and get a good one for them. When you start doing what is needful of you to do. You, you, the truth is that some of these young people you think are not concerned about the way they dress. The truth is that that is what they have to wear. That's the truth. And they stumble on that. Let's not look at them and just rubbish what we see. Let's go an extra mile. And God we bless our effort in Jesus' name. It says, verse 23, it says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you. So it is God that causes it to come down. If God doesn't do that, it's closed. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat. That is the impact of the rain. He hmm. said, The floor shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And then he said, And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. It is I will restore. You look at some of the young people today and you feel like this one, I don't want to waste my time on that. That's a mistake. That's a big mistake. That's the one you need to put your eyes on. That's the person you need to go extra my own. And if you do that, God will cause unusual release. Unusual blessing. The truth is this. When somebody decides to sow in the field that is already God's agenda, nothing will stop you. Whatever you sow, it is going to come back multiplied. God will bless you beyond your wildest dream. Please, let's keep our heart focused on him. And he will bring great glory to his name. In Jesus' name we pray. Turn with me to Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. For lack of time, I want to quickly read from verse number 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Please take note of that. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. 
This is the clear statement. No matter how you dress, how dressed you, you are, no matter what vehicle you came in with, this scripture remains so clear. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. My suit and my tie, irrespective. If any man hath not the spirit of God, he is none of his. Verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead. Hmm. Because of sin. The body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life. Take that again. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. Please take note of this. I read verse 11 again. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. This is a wonderful and glorious mystery. Once the spirit of God dwells on our inside, reigns on the inside, scripture says, he will quicken our mortal bodies. He quickened. The truth is that until the Lord releases his power, not one soul can be healed. Until the Lord releases his healing power. No amount of grammar that is spoken will make any difference. He brings about the supernatural turn around. In verse 12, he says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. We are not debtors to the flesh. Take note of that. We do not live after the flesh. Verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. This is the work of the spirit. If we through the spirit mortify the deeds of the body, we live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Nobody can be led until the person is completely under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Nobody can get around doing the things of God without the Spirit of God. Nobody can. Please look at that again. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sonship is only possible when we have a genuine relationship with him. You can be in the church for so many years and not be saved. 
You can have the biggest Bible and not be saved. You can quote so many scriptures and not be saved. You can preach and not be saved. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, please take note, as many that are led until we live a life that is yielded to the Holy Spirit and we are stirred to do what we do by the help of the Holy Spirit. Until that happens, we are not the sons of God. As many that are led, so if you take a quick look into your actions in the last one week, it's a quick one you can do that everybody can. Look at your actions in the last one week. Can you see the leading of God in the various things that you got yourself involved? As many that are led by the Spirit of God. From Sunday last week into Sunday, standing, standing here right now, seated here. Are there so much that we have to come and say, Father, have mercy. Father, forgive me. Father, are there so much? When we came to worship him this morning, is it because we have a lot of reason to say, thank you for helping me. Thank you for fighting my battles. Thank you for doing great and awesome things. Are we really living for him. He says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. This is a very strong thing. For as many that are led by the, the Spirit is never going to lead you to, to curse somebody. The Spirit is not going to lead you to slap somebody. Never. The Spirit is not going to lead you to do all kinds of funny things. But as many that are led so if you look at your life in the last one week, you can tell this is of God, this is not of God. But as many that are led by the Spirit, they shall be called the sons of God. So I may have a title that people look at and say, oh, reverend. That, that is a very serious thing. Except the grace of God Help me. That is going to be a serious thing to answer to. Except we are led by the Spirit of God. Beloved, we will fail. Every one of us. As many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. If you have the spirit of bondage, it leads to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We have received the spirit of adoption. We have been engrafted into the body of Christ. We were a wide branch but we were caught up and we were crafted into this awesome and glorious tree. And we became the sons of God. You see, when you take a white branch and put it into a glorious plant, you have to wait a little for everything that is making that branch wide to be washed off. And that's why when somebody gave his life to Christ, you don't have automatic everything changing. It washes and flushes everything that is not of God. And then he says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. When somebody is saved, 
truly say, you know. You know it. Because the amazing thing is that you see yourself doing what you couldn't before that moment. You see yourself having the grace to go from one what used to be a challenge and he launches you to something else. But if you've been in the church and no significant change has taken place, it's a waste of time. It's a clear example of the fact that you need to truly be born again. It has nothing to do with what people think and what people say. It is foolishness for you to put your eternal life in the hands of people sitting around you. It's eternal. Eternity is eternity. You live forever. The older somebody can live here, say you live to be 140, 150, it's over. He's gone. But eternity is forever. Why would we waste our time to live foolishly protecting foolishness? God has given us a glorious opportunity to serve him and serve him with a clear heart. He said in his word, and if children, then heirs. Please look at that. And if children, then heirs. And that, he took time to explain what kind of heirs. He says, heirs of God. Not just any. No, not just any. Heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. Hallelujah. And if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. If we suffer with him, we will be raised. Whether we're living here or over there. He decides to heal here and he may decide to do it over there. But one thing is obvious. Nobody enters into heaven with affliction. Nobody. You can't find anybody who entered into heaven with half leg. Nobody. He may decide to heal you right now. That's what only he can do. He may decide to take you home. The most important thing is that we are living in the will and the plan of God. Please, everyone hearing the sound of my voice. The Lord our God loves us. Far much more than we can imagine. He desired to take us far beyond our wildest dream. He wants to make unusual restoration and manifestation a reality. It will be unusual restoration. People have looked at you and they have concluded. But God has not. He has his plan for you. you know, when God sent his servant to go preach to the people of Nineveh, you know what? His servant knew that it's a waste of time for him. Because he knew that if he goes to preach, the people will repent. So he wanted them to die in their sin. So he jumped into the boat, going to a different direction. And God came and returned him back. God loves us 
far beyond our widest dream. And his plan for us is that we may live to his praise and glory. We stand here today. Please don't toy with this opportunity. Let's bow our heads and pray. The spirit of the Lord is heavy upon us. Please talk to him. Talk to him. Please talk to him. Go ahead and talk to him. If you are not sure that you are saved, see, if you have any reason to doubt that you are saved, that is when you need to pray and say, Father, have mercy on me. If you are not sure, it is so important for us to be sure. Say, Father, please put your hand mighty upon me. Please have mercy on me. Lord, I give my life to you. Lord, I give my all to you. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Transform my life. Somebody, you're wondering how you're going to continue living without the old ways that you used to live in. God has a great plan for you. He will send you help. He will send you help us beyond your widest dream. He will do things that will shock people around you. This same Jesus who put his hand upon my life and has done amazing things beyond my calculation. He's here and he wants to do great and mighty things in the life of many. If you sense the Lord is talking to you, I just want you to stand where you are, just where you are stand. Just then, say, Lord, I give you my life. I give you everything. Take over my life. Stand. Wherever you are, do it with boldness. Don't let nobody hinder you. You can stand. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for standing. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Come on, wherever you are. Join those standing. Don't waste the time. Thank you, Jesus. And as you stand, give him everything. Give him everything. I don't need you to come out here. He reaches you where you are standing. His hand be mighty upon you. Is there something in your life that is an hindrance that you are struggling with? Stand and give him everything and he will fight your battle. What is that thing that you are struggling with? He has the power to break it off. Thank you. Join those who are standing and pray. And the stronghold of the enemy will come down. I'm telling you right now. Mighty God, thank you. Thank you, Redeemer. Come on, come on. Go ahead and talk to him about those things. Some persons are struggling. There are about five persons struggling, seriously struggling. Let it go. Break loose and stand. Right where you are, right where you are standing, the hand of God is heavy upon you. The hand of God is heavy upon you. Don't look at anyone. Stand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give him everything. Give him everything. Jesus. 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 
Jesus, Jesus. Two more pensions. Come on, give him everything. And Father, we thank you for your sons and your daughters. Lord, please do what only you can. I don't have the ability. None of us have that capacity. Only you. Father, do what only you can. Take over these lives. Transform these lives. Break the hold of the enemy. Destroy the grip of the enemy. Break, lose every dominion of darkness. Let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And Father, please put your hand on them. Let your precious Holy Spirit reign over these lives. Precious Jesus, let your presence become so real. Lord, like you've done in many of our lives, let there be a massive transformation that they can look back to and say, on this day, the Lord turned my life around. And I know the difference. Father, let there be a great difference. Let your hand be mighty upon these lives in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, do what nobody else can do. Do what nobody else can do. Heal the sick. Set the captives free. Even among them standing, do what only you can. Do what only you can. Somebody you're believing God for his healing power. You believe in him to do what only he can. Stand where you are. You're trusting him to heal. You know, there are some things that, except the Lord decide to do that, there's nothing you, any one of us can do about it. We are still praying. You're trusting him to heal. The healer is in the building. He is the healer. Lord, let your healing power be heavy upon your sons and daughters. Father, from the crown of our heads down to the soles of our feet, whatever is not of you, let it be taken out in the name of Jesus. Father, let your healing power be released. Oh Lord, thank you God. The healing power is upon somebody right now. I sense it and I know it. Lord, let your healing power from the crown of our hands to the soles of our feet set us free in the name of Jesus. Whatever is not of you, let it be gone. That which is not of you, we command it to live in the mighty name of Jesus. The healing power of the Lord. Rest. Rest. Mightily upon each one of us. Father, we trust you to do what nobody can do. Lord, the doctors have tried. They have done their best. Father, please do what doctors can do. Heal, deliver, and save. Father, heal, deliver, and save. We fix our eyes on you. Heal, deliver, and save. Father, let an amazing testimony come forth out of this moment in the name of Jesus. And Father, when it has been done, we will return all the glory to you. Father, for you are the one who has done everything. Lord, I did nothing. I'm standing here. Lord, you are the one who went around. May all the praise and all the glory return back to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we ask that in no distant time, 
you give us amazing testimonies that others will hear and be so transformed that they may receive their own breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you for all that you have begun to do. We say thank you. Somebody, somebody has a situation in between your waist and your legs. The Lord set you free right now in the name of Jesus. In between your waist and your legs. Right now you are set free in the name of Jesus. Somebody on your back, the healer sets you free in the name of Jesus. Somebody on your right hand, the healer set you free in the name of Jesus. Somebody on the back of your head, he sets you free in the name of Jesus. Whatever you are believing in for, receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we say thank you for amazing things that you have done. We fix our eyes on you. We trust in you. Lord, our hope is in you. Lord, we give you glory. Can we give him the glory? Come on. Please, please give him the glory. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Blessed be your name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. For all you have done, Father, we say thank you. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. To you be the glory. To you be the honor. And to you be the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Redeemer. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Master. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Psalm says, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? And the same psalm says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. In appreciation to God, I want you to come to the altar with a dancing offering and a gift offering unto the Lord. For all he has done for you. Let us rise up, even as we give to the Lord our tithes and offering and our capital project. Jack Balotel, like Benu, came in our Woga Canary. Jack Balotel, like Benu.
opportunity we have to give to you. Our Father, Lord, all that we have brought, all that we are, and all that we will be, they are not enough to appreciate you. But Father, out of the abundance you have given to us, we have come with this token. Lord Jesus, we pray that you are accepted from us in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we pray that these offerings that we have given to your work, Lord, we ask that you will sanctify it. Amen. Lord, that this war money will be used, Lord, to harvest souls to your kingdom. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every hands that have given today and the ones that they did give because they don't have, the ones that have given in dancing, the ones that have given in August singing, 
and the ones that have given both in dancing and singing and in cash. Father, in return, you will bless them. Amen. Father, we pray, O oh God, your resources will never run dry. Amen. Even in the hard economy, heaven economy will be their portion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Mighty and everlasting Father, this that we have given will be a source of flowing and unending income to our jobs and to our businesses in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed Redeemer, we bless your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you, ancient of days. Hallowed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please let's take note that all those born in the month of April, you are asked to wait behind at this side of the auditorium immediately after the service. Um, I want to use this time to welcome our mommy that has been away for some time, resting and enjoying herself. Mommy Okumagba. God bless you. You are welcome back. Glad to see you again. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God Amen. All right, we received your greetings. God bless you, ma. Amen. Amen. Uh, just to appeal to Ross that immediately after we say the grace, there will be a brief, very brief church in sitting. What I mean by that is that we'll sit down and um, there's something we want to present to you just to see, get your approval. Just to get your approval. You know, Baptist Church, the church in conference is the highest decision making body. And there are some things that cannot wait. So we just want to get your approval. It will not take more up to 10 minutes, I promise you, by the grace of God. Amen. 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 At this particular point in time, we want to join our Father in the Lord, Papa Loki Efenure, in thanking God for making him to clock 80 years in the course of the week. <laughs> he is here with our mommy and um, the children and family members. They are here to thank God specially. So the, the choral group. Hey, happy birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday! 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 Happy birthday!
celebrate with you, Papa, and we thank God for your life on behalf of the whole of Avenue Baptist Church. We say happy birthday to you. Many happy returns in Jesus' name. Congratulations, sir. We'll give you opportunity in one minute. Just say a word of thanks to God. My voice is failing me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God will save you with this voice. Maybe Mama will help you. <laughs> I know yesterday Praise was very busy Lord. for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have nothing to say that to say thank you, Jesus. So you just help me sing this song for all of us. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. What shall I say unto the Lord? says as your days are so shall your strength be that will be your portion in Jesus name let me also use this opportunity to congratulate those that have their birthday today I'm seeing people that have their birthday standing in front today uh, Dickness Onakufi and the rest congratulations happy birthday she's looking beautiful <laughs> amen let's pray together our righteous Father in heaven, we honor you, we adore you. Lord, we are grateful and we are thankful on behalf of our Father whom you have preserved his, li his life these 80 years. It is not because he is capable to live 80 years on his own. It is not because of the things he has done, but for what you have done. Lord, we say thank you in Jesus' name. For strength, we say thank you. For good health, we say thank you. For family that you gave to him, we say thank you. For resources that you have been blessing him with, we say thank you. For salvation, knowing you, serving you, working for you, we say thank you. Glory, praise, honor, majesty, dominion, greatness be ascribed unto your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord in heaven, we pray that even as he has come in acknowledgement of your faithfulness, Lord, you will renew his strength. Lord, he will mount up with wings as eagles. It will be like the eagle that at old age it changes its wings and changes its feather. Lord, he will, she will, he will begin to move with strength, new strength fresh strength, fresh energy from above in the mighty name of Jesus. Instead of him to break down in any way, at any point, Lord, his strength shall be renewed. In the mighty name of Jesus, sicknesses and diseases associated with old age will not locate him. In the mighty name of Jesus, he will enjoy fulfillment in this old age. Every day in the, for the rest of his life is a fulfilled day for him. He will look back and he will smile with fulfillment. He will be joyful with fulfillment. He will be glad with fulfillment. And everything that he will see that he will experience again will bring fulfillment to him. Nothing will reduce his joy. Nothing will decrease his joy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for mama that is standing by him. Lord, you will strengthen her. 
and together they will continue to grow. Thank you for the children that you have given him and you have blessed him with. Lord, may you continue to increase them. Bless them on every side. In the mighty name of Jesus. He will not hear sad news from his children. Lord, he will not hear bad news from his children. Papa will grow older than this. He will grow older than this. He will not bury his children. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord in heaven, even in your vineyard, he will continue to remain relevant. He will continue to be a source of inspiration to many. Both family, family wise and spiritual life. His life will continue to encourage others. In the mighty name of Jesus. If I use him as a point of contact to as many that have their birthday today. May the blessing of birthday in church follow them. May the blessing of having themselves stand before you inside uh, the church. In, uh, before the altar. Even on their own birthday. Let that blessing follow them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Long life and prosperity, fulfillment and unending joy be the portion of every celebrant today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Accept this thanksgiving that your people have brought before you. For in Jesus' mighty, faithful, and powerful name, we pray. Rorio Jaroki Yeme, Ogene Biko Prui, Abuba Moro Seme, Oseme, Oseme, Abuba Moro Seme, Mavomi Kinyi Oseme, Rorio Jaroki Yeme, Ogene Biko Prui, Abuba Moro Seme, Oseme. Very quickly, we will welcome the Youth Fellowship of Grace Baptist Association. They want to thank God for the success of their campaign program. So please, let's join them as they thank God.
alive. Shout hallelujah. I want to invite Reverend Bawo Edun to come and pray specially for our youths. Reverend Bawo Edun. By the good of God, arise and shine. Amen. Your light has come. Amen. Darkness will never see your light. Amen. By great darkness, I rule away. They are rule away. Amen. For you to get forward to where God does it for you. Amen. With our brother, congratulations, Amen. jubilation, Amen. celebration. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. Um, before we take the closing hymn, I want to introduce somebody to us, our daughter. She will be representing Providence Delta Baptist Conference at the, com at the convention in session in the Sunbeam Quiz, Sunbeam Competition. She will be representing the conference, not just this church, not just this association, but the conference. So the conference is sending her to the convention. Kubenji Orishe Moyok Bemi Orishe Moyok Let her come this way, please. Victoria. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. As you say, so the brain. Eh? So please just stretch your hands towards her. She's going for this competition at the, nat at the national level. Other conferences will be represented and she will be representing our conference. Lord, let her come out the best. I know that other people are praying too, but this is our own prayer. Let her come out as the best. Pray for her. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father, our God, our King, we thank you for this wonderful daughter that you have blessed us with. Thank you for the wisdom and intelligence. Thank you for the very high IQ you have given to her. Holy Spirit, we commit Kubenji, Orishaimoy Ogbemi, Victoria into your hands. As she prepares in these remaining few days, and as she goes for that competition representing the Providence Delta Baptist Conference, we agree as a church that she will make us proud. She will come out the best. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that she prepared for, she will not forget them. As the questions are doling out, the answers will be flowing. In the mighty name of Jesus. And by the time they return from the convention, we will celebrate with her. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Congratulations in advance. God bless you. Hallelujah. We'll take the closing hymn and like I pleaded, just 10 minutes after we say the grace, we will be discussing and seeking your approval on one or two subjects. Have faith in God. Amen. Please can we rise. Baptist him now. Two, five, three.
Sunday school and some of you that those of you that did the devotion this morning we know that in our daily encounter we have been talking about faith I need you to put your faith to work this week like that hymn some prayers seem unanswered some things seem as if God is not even doing anything about it but I believe God wants to challenge your faith and you too you have to put your faith to work I want to assure you whatever you put your faith to work today you will get a testimony in return. And so in one minute, what is that challenging thing that seems unanswered, that prayer that seems unanswered, you want to try your faith. If God has been doing it for somebody, why, will he, why won't he do it for you? Why would God not do it for you? I know God wants you to exercise your faith. For teaching us about faith since on Sunday last week, up till this morning in our daily encounter, even in the Sunday school, God wants somebody to put his faith to work. Just take that, take that one minute now. Where you believe God needs to do something in your life, put your faith to work. Some of you will return with testimony. Those of you that practice this faith, just do something practical. Lord, mention it to God. Be very practical about it. Mention that aspect of your life. Where you want to exercise this faith. It will happen. In 
Jesus name we pray. In the same vein, I want you to raise your voices on behalf of all convention delegates all over the convention, all over Nigeria and out from outside Nigeria. People are flying in from outside the country. People are traveling from Togo, Ghana, Ivory Coast to the convention. Pray, God, as our people move from Delta State, from, uh, from Lagos, from everywhere, from Abuja, from Kaduna, everywhere. Lord, we clear the airways, we clear the sea we waterways, and we clear the land. Johnny mercies you will grant unto your people. Johnny mercies. No accident, no armed robbery attack. They will not waylay people on the way. Abductors will not see God's people. Kidnappers will not see them. Everyone will go safely. They will return safely. Even at the convention ground, for the six days that we will be at the convention, pray it will be safety all the way. Divine protection. The fire of God, the pillar of fire, will be in the convention ground. From the convention campground to, the, uh, to our various rest places, our hotels, and uh, wherever people are resting, God will protect people. Commit every driver, whether personal driver, church drivers, and even public buses drivers, as many that will go to the convention, whether through public bus, the Lord will take over every driver. In Jesus' name we pray. Lastly, pray and say, God, this convention, let there be an apostolic invasion. And you may not understand that I don't have time to explain that what the apostles experienced, the kind of revival, spiritual revival and spiritual impartation that went, I mean, that the apostles experienced as they went about moving the gospel from one place to the other. Let it happen live and direct. Salvation healing, revival, deliverance, breakthroughs, all kinds of miracles, signs and wonders. Our convention shall be repositioned for the glory of God. Our convention shall be repositioned for greatness. In Jesus' name, mighty and powerful name we pray and so father we bless your name for today's worship service we say receive all the glory lord we believe that we have not worshipped you in vain our spiritual life has been elevated and we know oh god you have brought us more intimate with you and by the reason of what we have done today the singing the worship and even the hearing of your word through your servants our lives have been drawn closer to you we will love you better. We will know you better. We will follow you better. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that every one of us will live here to become an instrument of your glory, even outside there. In the mighty name of Jesus. In our marketplaces, in our places of work, even in our families, in our compounds, will become instruments of your glory to restore men back to your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord in heaven, for your servants you use today, we agree together that his ministry will skyrocket to the next level. His family will be lifted to higher grounds. For the youth fellowship that have gathered, Lord, they will never remain the same. They will never recover from the impartation that they have gotten this weekend. In the mighty name of Jesus. For every prayer request your people have made, exercising their faith, putting their faith to work. Lord, I join my faith with the faith of your people. And I agree with them for your words. If two of us shall agree, I agree with every man. I agree with every woman. I agree with every boy, every girl that has presented their prayer request to you. Let it be, be done for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let everyone begin to attend to their prayer request in the mighty name of Jesus. In the area of healing, receive your healing. 
In the area of promotion, receive your promotion. In the area of job, em get job uh, gainful employment, receive that employment. In the area of getting that contract, receive it. In whatever area of breakthrough you're looking for, receive it. Marital settlement, receive it. Everything that you desire to build your house, to buy a car, to travel out, to hear good news from your children, receive it in the name of Jesus. Whatever will make you sorrowful this week shall be far from you. Whatever will make you cry and weep this week, it shall be far from you. In the name of Jesus, God will surprise you. He will shock you with answers to your prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus. And once again, Lord, we agree that the convention 2024 is a huge success. We put our faith to work concerning the convention. People will travel in safety and they will return in safety. In the mighty name of Jesus. The blessings that heaven has prepared for the convention this year. Nobody will miss it. Both those that will be there on site. Those that will be watching online. Lord, those that will connect one way or the other. Every Baptist member within the convention and outside the convention. They will receive theirs in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. We return glory and praise to your name. As we go, we go in your name. We go in your power and we go in your glory. Joyfully, joyfully we go. Lord, in humble adoration we go. And we know we shall all return with testimonies. To the glory of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you and everything that concerns you now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a glorious week. Amen. So we'll have the church sitting. It's just going to be less than 10 minutes by the grace of God. Um, just that only those that are baptized are permitted to speak.